the weird circle. In this cave by the restless sea, we are met to call from out of the past stories, strange and weird. Bell keeper, toll the bell so that all may know we are gathered again in the weird circle. is quiet, deathly quiet. My uncle and I have just finished our meager repast in the dining room. Listen. Yes, that's my uncle walking up and down overhead, pacing the floor. He senses it too, my nervousness. Every night after dinner, he leaves the dining room and goes upstairs to the second floor, where he paces up and down. And suddenly, his heart begins to beat louder and louder. You can't hear it, but I can. My nervousness has sharpened my senses. Yes, I can hear things no one else can hear. Confound my senses. The footsteps, they've stopped. Now he'll walk down the circular stairway and join me here in the parlor. And I'll have to look at him, watch him, that eye. I, I have nothing against him, but his eye, that huge, distorted eye. If the eye offends thee, pluck it out. Pluck it out. Tortures me at night. I lie in bed and shut my eyes, but that horrible thing peers at me. Embedded in my senses, that eye glistens and shimmers. It haunts me. Kill. 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 I have nothing against him. My uncle, my only relative. The eye. Pluck out the eye. The eye. The eye. <laughs> He's coming, yes, now down the stairs, sniffing as he blinks. The swollen lid covers that eye. Uncle, is that you? Is it me? Of course it is. Who else would it be, Charles? I... I don't know. Ah, now for a nice hour of relaxation. Will you join me in a cigar, Charles? Here, take this one of mine. Thank you, Uncle. Sit down here. I'd prefer sitting back here, Uncle. Oh, nonsense. I can't see you over there, and you can't see me. Come. Come sit over here. I'd much prefer to stay here. Do you dislike my company after all these years, Charles? No, Uncle. All right, I'll join you. But... Why are you staring at me like that? The eye. Look at the eye. Staring at you. Red and swollen hideous. A pale blue film covers it. Kill. Kill. Charles. Yes, Uncle. Come, light up your cigar. Here's a light. Now, oh, that's better, my boy. These cigars have rich, fragrant aroma. A very rich, fragrant aroma. It lulls a man's nerves into a peaceful state. It leaves the mind free for contemplation, doesn't it? Kill. Yes, Uncle. Kill. Nothing like the hours spent meditatively. 
Oh, blasted visitors. You answer the bell, Charles. Yes, Uncle. I dislike being interrupted like this. It's bad for my digestion. People should know that. Good evening, Mr. Holt. Well, good evening, Charles. I hope you and your uncle don't mind a nice neighborly visit. I'm sure we don't, Mr. Holtzcomb. I'm glad. I was all alone this evening and felt the need of a nice, friendly chat, so I dropped over. Uh, good evening, Mr. Woodward. Mm, good evening, Mr. Holtzcomb. How are you this evening? Feeling surprisingly fit. man of my age has no right feeling so healthy. Bad for the doctor's income, but I feel like a man of 20. Just as fit physically and mentally as Charles here. Thank you, Mr. Holtzcomb. Uh, uh, you, uh, uh, well, won't you join us for a little while, Mr. Holt? I'd love to. Yes, indeed, I'd enjoy it. Can't be for long. I, I'm retiring early, but a short visit would be appreciated. Thank you, Mr. Woodward. Uh, mind if I light up my pipe? No, not at all, Mr. Holscomb. Uh, Charles, get him an ashtray before he scatters the ashes all over the carpet, you know? Yes, Uncle. Here you are, Mr. Holscomb. Thank you, Charles. Well, 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 what's this? Now, as any idiot can plainly see, it's a knife. Yes, a knife, Mr. Woodward. It's a strange-looking knife. Yeah, it belonged to our ancestors. Hmm. Charles, what's it doing down here off the hook on the wall? I, uh, I took it down from the wall to clean it, Uncle. Clean it? Well, old knives are supposed to look old. Clean it. Clean it? Uh, I'll put it back. Uh, be careful, Charles, my boy. I knew of a young man exactly your age who took a family heirloom down from the wall one night and, and well, blasted if it didn't slip and cut off his right arm. <laughs> yes, took the arm clean off right to the elbow. He, he was a mechanic by profession, and it, well, it, it ruined his career. Be careful, be careful, Charles, in putting the knife back. You'd better stand on a chair, Charles. It's it's much wiser to take an ounce of prevention. Yes, your uncle's right. How's that, Uncle? Well, it's it, it's not hanging straight. I like things to hang straight. It annoys me to have something crooked on the wall. Yes, it means a death in the family. <laughs> One of the pictures in my house was crooked on the wall the night of my wife's death. Now, I'm not a superstitious man, mind you, but I... There. Yeah, that does it, Charles. All right. Now, put the chair back where you got it. I'm not a superstitious man, mind you, but I was confounded when she died. Confounded, I tell you. Yes, I imagine that you were confounded. Uh, of course, that coincidence really doesn't compare with an event which occurred to a friend of mine. His name was... Um, mm, very common name. Uh, what was it? Uh, Smith. Peter Smith. Yeah, well, what about Peter Smith? He had a picture on the wall in his home. Well, this picture sidled over on its wire, refusing to stay upright. The picture refused? I swear it's true, Mr. Woodward. Well, I was there, if you don't believe me. Do you know what happened? No, I do not know what happened. Peter Smith died that very night. All right. What time is it, Charles? Almost nine o'clock, Uncle. Three more hours. Three more hours. If thine eye offends thee, pluck it out. It's nine o'clock. It's almost my bedtime, Mr. Holskin. Oh, don't mind me, Mr. Woodward. I was about to leave anyway. <laughs> I see. Look at the knife hanging on the wall. It slipped sideways again. So it has. Anxious? Anxious, Charles? The knife is anxious. It reminds me of Peter Smith's picture. Hmm. Well, I, I must be on my way. Uh, don't bother to see me to the door, Charles. I'll find my way out. Uh, good evening, Mr. Woodward. Uh, good evening, Mr. Holscomb. Come, confounded. That, that man makes me nervous, Charles, with his stupid stories of Smith. Fix that knife, Charles. Of course, Uncle. I, I'll fix it right away. I'm tired. I'll go on up to bed now. I'll help you up the stairs, Uncle. Help me? <laughs> Since when do I need help? Well, maybe I do, Dad. Anything else you want of me besides opening this window, Uncle? No, nothing, child. I'd better take this chair out of your way. Oh, the chair isn't in my way. In case you should awake during the night and want to get out of bed. You don't want to stumble over chairs on your way to the door. Well, I, I never awake during the night, Charles. 
But you might. Or we might. Yes, we might. We might creep in here. I might, yes, I might. Oh, I might do anything, my boy. I also might not. Now, take the candle with you before you leave, child. Of course, Uncle. I hadn't intended to leave it burning. Of course. We'll take it with us. Of course. Of course. Good night. Good night. 9.30. 9.30. I must be clever. I must think everything out very carefully. Yes, carefully. Must wait till midnight. Yes, till midnight. Why must I wait till midnight? Why? That's the plan. The clever plan. Clever, clever. Walk down the stairs and wait in the parlor. The room will be dark. And I'll wait. I'll wait. He'll be asleep by midnight. Clever, clever. Then at midnight, I'll creep up the stairs with a knife. And if the eye offends me, pluck it out. It must have meant me. Of course, it's all so clear. Clear, clear and clever. First thing to do is get the knife. Go into the parlor, stand on the chair and get the knife. Be careful, child. Careful, careful, careful with the chair. You pull up the chair and stand on it, but be careful. I'm always careful. Now I have the knife. What do I do next? What is the plan? Sit and wait. Sit and wait. <laughs> the doorbell. Who could it be at this hour? This isn't part of my plan. No, not part of my plan. Get rid of them, whoever they are. Get rid of them. Oh, Mr. Holscombe. Sorry to disturb you, Charles, but I left my pipe here. I, I looked all over my house for the blasted thing before I remembered I'd left it here. Well, it, it must be in the parlor. Don't bother yourself. I'll get it. It's no bother. Why, you're trembling, Charlie. Did I frighten you when I rang the bell? Well, I... I wasn't expecting you. No, not expecting you. Expecting you. I read of a man in the paper who died of fright when his doorbell rang. It was just the other day I read it. Very amusing article, too. It was... Oh, here's the pipe. Imagine my leaving it behind. Yes, imagine it. Thanks again, Charlie. What's this knife doing down here again? Uh, it slipped. Slipped again, did it? Well, well, well. Just like the picture at Peter Smith's. If let me know if anything happened. Of course. Of course. Of course. Good night, Charles. Good night, Mr. Holscombe. Now, the plan. The plan to wait. Wait. Wait for midnight. For midnight. Yes, for midnight. for the knife to be in my hand. Charles, your palms are moist. Maybe the knife will slip, Charles. It's almost midnight. Yes, Charles. Fifteen seconds. Maybe the knife will slip, Charles. It can't slip. It belongs in my hand. Where is the lantern, Charles? You've got to see, you know. I have it. It's ready. Listen, Charles. Listen. Midnight. Twelve midnight. The time has come. Yes, the time has come. Now for the lantern. Light it. Light it. 
at the door of the lantern. No light can escape. None. None. The lantern in one hand. The knife in the other. The knife. The knife. Listen. The house is so quiet. Yes, deathly quiet. I must walk quietly. Listen. Listen. My senses sharpen. Every second makes them sharper. I can hear the rhythmic beating of the old man's heart. The beating of his heart. Beating out his last breath. His last breath. His last breath. Do you know death is outside your door, Uncle? Death is waiting, Uncle. Waiting. The door of your room opens gently, Uncle. Gently, Uncle. Careful, the plant. Careful, careful. Listen. Listen. The heart. The beating of the old man's heart. Who, who's there? Stand still, Charles. Stand still and wait. Just wait. Wait until his gleaming eye is focused on your face. Who's in my room? Who is it? Where's my candle? Don't answer, Charles. Don't answer. Just wait. Wait. Charles! Charles! He's calling for you. Little does he know. Charles! Calling for you. Calling for you. Oh, oh someone's in my room. I can see the shadow across my bed. Oh, who is it? Let him guess and worry. 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 The room is hot. Hot in heaven's name. Answer me. Don't move a muscle. Just stand still and wait. Wait? Wait? Oh, what is it? Who is it? Where is Charles? <laughs> Listen to his heart. His heart. Listen to his heart. Now it's panic. Later, it will be the forewarning of death. Oh, somebody help me. Now raise the lantern. Slowly, Charles. That's it. That's it. Focus it. Where the eyes should be. Then slowly open the door of the lantern and let the light shine in that eye. Oh! If the eye offends thee, pluck the it out. The eye! The eye! <laughs> no! No! Not the knife! Not the knife! <laughs> Listen to the heart beat its last beat. <laughs> He's dead. He's dead. And I'm free of that horror. Free of the eye. Of the scorpion eye. The horrible scorpion eye. Clever, clever, Charles. Burying the body where no one will ever suspect it to be. Clever, clever. Yes, I am clever. Underneath the floor of the parlor. Underneath the floor in the parlor. Yes, right here beneath me. I must be careful, very careful. You are careful. Hammer the nails in straight. The nails are important. Very important. One more nail and then my job is done. One... Now, now what? Oh, yes. Pull the big upholstered chair over the grave. There. And then, place the carpet just as it was in front of it. Clever, clever. Yes, I am clever. <laughs> Very clever. The plan has worked. He's dead. He's dead. And no one knows. No one knows? I've cleaned up his bedroom, scrubbed it, put his clothes away. Not even a blood stain remains to give me away. Not one? Not one. No trace. No trace at all. You're positive. Of course I'm positive. Clever, clever child. Of course I'm clever. Today I'll tell the neighbors my uncle left for the country. Will they believe you? Of course they'll believe me. Believe you. Believe you. And tomorrow, early tomorrow morning, I'll say I'm leaving to join my uncle in the country. 
It's so easy. I disappear. Disappear completely from the world. Forever from that eye. That huge, distorted eye. So I dropped over to this precinct station, Inspector Gelby, and thought I'd tell you about it. Yeah, it's a very strange story, Mr. Holscomb. You say this old man, Mr. Woodward, has never left town for the baths before? Not for the last 20 years, sir. I've been their neighbor for longer than that, really. Hmm. And the nephew, Charles Woodward. Uh, how did he seem this morning? Very much the same as usual. Perhaps a trifle more chipper. Said he was looking forward to joining his uncle at the baths tomorrow. And you are positive this scream you heard last night came from the direction of the Woodward house? Absolutely. I was standing at my window at the time, looking out. It must have been a little past midnight. Suddenly I saw a gleam of light from Mr. Woodward's bedroom and then the scream. Scream last long? No, but I'm positive no unimportant explanation is behind the scream. It sounds fishy enough, Mr. Holscomb. Certainly no harm in investigating it. The boy is innocent. He'll be glad enough to allow us to search his uncle's bedroom. If he's guilty, well, we'll know in good time. Yes, in very good time. Mind if I go with you? Not at all, not at all. I'd like to have you along, Holscomb. You're always welcome. This isn't a case of idle curiosity, Inspector. It's just that I enjoy collecting these little tales of death and murder. I've made it a life hobby, and I hate to miss an opportunity. Yes, I hate to miss an opportunity. Search the house, Inspector, if you don't believe me. My uncle's room is right at the top of these stairs. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. My uncle will be very amused by all this when I tell him. Oh, it's not that either I nor Mr. Holscomb suspect anything, you know. No, no, certainly not, Charlie, my boy. Of course not. Yep, this is my uncle's room, as you no doubt know, Mr. Holscomb. Yes, of course it is. Search to your heart's content. Mm, room's in perfect order. If I murdered my uncle mysteriously, there ought to be at least one blood stain on the bedclothes or, or on the floor. Mind if I undo the bed to look at the sheets? Well, not at all, Inspector. Careful. You are clever. Clever, but be careful. The bed sheets are used, but there's certainly no sign of violence here. Well, naturally, Inspector. And the floors. Hmm, spotless. Your uncle must be a very neat man. Exceedingly neat. Isn't he, Mr. Holscomb? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Well, I'm sorry we bothered you like this, sir. But you know it's better to be on the safe side. Well, I, I understand perfectly, Inspector. I'm sorry, Charles. Perfectly all right, Mr. Holscomb. I would have done the same thing in your shoes. Uh, won't you gentlemen join me in the parlor for a cup of tea before you leave? Well, now, uh, we'd be too much trouble. No uh... trouble at all, I guarantee you. No trouble at all. Here, I, I better close the door to Uncle's room before dust blows through from the hallway. You know my uncle's fetish. Well, I, I'll join you gentlemen in the parlor shortly after I fetch the tea. <laughs> a very amusing story. A very amusing story, Mr. Holt. I always thought so, Inspector Gilby. You collect stories of crime, don't you, Mr. Holt? Yes, indeed. I found some prize ones in my day. Yes, I, I imagine you have. He'd enjoy your story, Charles. Yes, he'd enjoy it. Enjoy it. Uh, pass the sugar, Inspector, please. Huh? Oh, yes, here you are. Listen, Charles. What is it? Listen, listen. What'd you say, Charles? Nothing. I have a very amusing story about a woman in India. I read it in the paper the other morning just as I was eating some very fine orange marmalade. Listen, listen. It's the heart, Charles. The old man's heart. The heart, the heart. You can hear it. No. No, it can't be. What can't be? He denies the truth of my story even before I tell it. Uh, what about the woman in India? Can it be? Can it be the beating of the old man's heart? Well, she murdered a rich uncle of hers. Getting louder and louder. Louder and louder. Why did she murder him? No known motive. They're playing with me. They're both watching me. Watching me. Watching you. Watching you. How did she murder him? Cut him in little pieces and hid him under the flooring in her bedroom. Under the flooring? Under the flooring. Making a mockery of a, a living horror. They know, Charles. They know. They know, Charles. They know. What's the matter, Charles? Well, you don't say it. Ew. Ew. Make it stop. Make it stop. They're playing with you. Playing with no. you. No. Watch him, Inspector. He's, he's... The fools. Don't play with me like this. You can hear it. I can see it in your faces. In your evil, grinning faces. You can hear it. The heart. The telltale heart. Return from death. Admit you can hear it. 
coming louder and louder. Louder and louder. 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 Stop it. Stop it. I admit the deed. I admit I murdered my uncle last night. Only for the love of God. Make his hideous heart stop beating. You murdered? Yes. Yes, I murdered him. Tear up the plank underneath his chair. Rescue the body. But stop the beating of the telltale heart. Telltale heart. Telltale heart. <laughs> of the past, we have brought to you the story, The Telltale Heart. Bell Keeper, pull the bell. of the past, we have heard another immortal tale in The Weird Circle. Bellkeeper, toll the bell. Be here in this lonely cave by the restless sea once again next time for another immortal